The evidence suggests that Andy Penmore had possession of Stan Everston's cell phone. And now we have Andy's fingerprint on the gun adapter, tying him to the murder weapon. Yeah, and that's our murder weapon. Back together again for this special encore performance. Andy's prints are on the Vic cell phone and on the murder weapon adapter. Time to stop all the games and play for real. Let's arrest this guy. As much? More? Try eight days in a row. My eyes are burning right now from sitting at a monitor, making this game fly. Was that what you bargained for? Actually, yes. Everybody in the game industry knows that long hours is part of the deal. I'm in this field because I love it. I'm a lucky guy, making games for a living. What is this, some stupid attempt to entrap me? It's no fake, Andy. Well, then Stan Everston was a fake. If this is true, he was planning to renege on my piece of the action. Bastard lied to me. If I'd have known this, you really would have a right to look at me as a murder suspect. But I didn't know, and I didn't kill him! Though I'd like to strangle his ass right now. Well played, Andy. But a gifted hacker like you? You've known about that email all along. You're reaching, but you aren't touching anything. Read my lips. I never saw this stupid thing before! Anyway, when Stan was killed, my stake in the company hadn't kicked in yet. What would I have gained, killing that liar? You didn't have a stake yet. And you found out you never would. Not unless you removed Stan and brought in witnesses who heard his oral contract to you. Andy, we found the cell phone, we know about the adapter, and your prints are on it. Then there's the little matter of you being the last one to see Stan Everston alive. I wasn't the last one to see him alive. The killer was. You don't play this game at all well, guys, but good luck to you. Everybody's got to start somewhere. Am I free to go? How could I do that from my hotel room, which is where I was when he was killed? Sure you were. There's no proof of that, by the way. Just flimsy setups from you to make us think you were there. If that's the best you can do, I can't wait to see you try to build a case on air like this in court. You're right, we don't have the evidence we need, but we have a lot of testimony. Help us find the real killer, since you're innocent and all. I see. You pretend to ask for my help when you really want me to try to incriminate myself, give you false testimony on facts so you can trip me up. If I don't, then I'm unwilling and you hold me longer. So, I'm game. I'll help you. Okay. Well then, who convinced Stan into inviting Craig, persona non grata, to the gun club party? I did. I don't deny that. Who also told Craig to bring his own 22? Who ensured Stan bought and brought his 45? Who researched how weapons work in the real world? Who told Stan there was a last minute problem with the game, ensuring he would stay late at the demo center? I did, but none of that means I killed him, of course. I'm just getting started. Who knew that an adapter for both a 22 and a 45 would be needed for this coincidence? Who knew Maya not only had a PR bonus, but was also an expert shot? Who was ready with flimsy alibis when the others decided to hook up on an accidental meeting? Uh... Who set this whole thing up months in advance the minute you found that email telling you your payday was gone the way of floppy disks? You can't prove that. Let me walk you through what we can prove, thanks to your help. By ensuring both the 45 and the 22 would be at the club, you could grab a few of Craig's bullets. When you told Stan there were problems with the game, he gave you the 45 and the ammo to take back to the room while he went to the convention center. 
You walked through the lobby so the cameras could see you, entered the room, ordered your movie, modified the gun, and then snuck out. Once in the demo room, you cranked up the game audio and shot Stan twice in the chest and once in the head. Then, you staged the crime scene to potentially throw blame on Maya or maybe just some disgruntled fan. You also turned down the air conditioning to further confuse the time of death. You switched out the adapter, wiped the 45 clean, and returned it to the gun case. Then you grabbed Stan's cell and punched in your second alibi and bolted back to your room to order that alibi salad. You wiped off the phone and adapter, and the next morning, you ditched him near Craig's car. Easy to find, right? However, in your haste, you left partial prints on both items. Then it was off to the convention, from one con right into another. You see, Andy, we're not trying to get you to incriminate yourself. You said that you'd help us. The truth is, we don't need anything from you. We know what you did, and we know how you did it. Combined with all the physical evidence we got on you, we have everything we need. No, you'll never make this play in court. This murder was all a game to you, wasn't it? But there was a glitch in your programming. It's your sick ego. And that's a bug you'll never get out of your system. That was an interesting case. It's funny. Andy tried so hard to control every detail to cover up his involvement. And since you uncovered that every detail was controlled by him, that was the break we needed. Physical evidence is strong, but it's the context of that evidence to the events that makes it the strongest. Well done. Let's move on to your case evaluation. Great work. But asking for help costs you in your final evaluation. See if you can do as well without using any hints. Hello again. Your first two cases indicate you have a real gift for forensics, but can you handle a genuinely grisly crime scene? I have one for you. First officer reports a call saying the apartment of a certain young woman is painted in blood. The apartment, and possibly the blood, belongs to a celebrity of sorts, Carrie Louise Canelli, the casino heiress. But there's no body, just plenty of blood. You'll have Sarah Seidel at your side. Sarah knows her way around even the bloodiest crime scene better get going. She'll meet you there. Wow, this is a lot of blood. Be careful not to step in anything. I'll document most of this, but I'd like you to photo anything that looks out of place. I don't want to jump to any conclusions yet. I just want to take in the evidence. This blood pooling is undisturbed. Strange. If a struggle happened with this much blood everywhere, A lot of blood for one person to lose. We don't have a body, but I'm thinking we should have. Nothing here that will help us.
That's not right for this. Drawer still locked, but this indentation probably means somebody jimmied it. Looks like some old impressions on the pad. Let's see if you know how to process it in the field. You know what you've been doing? You won't see a penny, Lucy. Lucy, huh? The freezer is empty, not even a frozen pizza or TV dinner. We have a print overlapping the door, which means somebody left after the crime went down. Some kind of waxy substance? Something big and heavy was dragged through here. Body, maybe. Nothing here that will help us. Somebody was making this window into a door. Herp fleeing the crime scene? Plastic fragment. I have a guess what this is, but Grissom tells me not to do that. Who are you? Make that, who the hell are you? Las Vegas Crime Lab. Calm down, sir, and answer the question. Sorry. I guess I didn't expect to see a, you know, chick playing cop. No offense. I'm Michael Dubois, Carrie's fiance. I hope you can tell me what the hell happened here. And where in God's name is she? We're gonna do our best to determine what happened here, Mr. Dubois, and I'll try not let being a chick impede that. I told you I didn't mean any offense. 
Wouldn't you be off your game if you showed up at your girlfriend's place and found it splattered like this? Could be. I'm just freaking out. Looking every place including the damn ceiling for her. Could've left footprints just about anywhere in here. Take him. Nice work. I wish I didn't. Lucy Canelli is Carrie's little sister. Don't think I throw the B word around loosely, but Lucy Canelli, she is one cold, calculating bitch. If you tell me she has something to do with this, don't expect me to act shocked. When there's a will, there's a way. An old man Canelli made Carrie, his older, more responsible daughter, the beneficiary of his major property, the Double Dip Casino. Even the old boy knows enough not to trust Lucy with that kind of responsibility. And brother was little sister pissed. Over at the Double Dip, she works there, sucking up to daddy. Uh, around midnight, I was expecting Carrie to be here. When I opened the door, I, I freaked out. Search for her, nothing. Then I call the cops, ASAP. Three months from tomorrow. I mean, Carrie was picking out her damn wedding dress just the other day. Just yesterday, in my apartment. We had lunch. I fixed it for her. Kind of an amateur chef. I'm not the sexist pig you think I am. God, we could have gone down here. Can you test this blood and see if it's Carrie's or something? Carrie? Are you kidding? Don't pay any attention to that crap in the tabloids. Carrie's a sweetheart, a living angel. I hope to hell she still is. Nah, she was just Carrie. If anything, she was in a better mood than usual. Sometimes she can be kind of quiet, even, uh, I don't mean this in a bad way, uh, mousy. But she was all smiles and laughs. Appointment? You think I make appointments with my own woman? I was just dropping by. I do that all the time. She likes it, me surprising her like that. Well, I've been here a hundred times, so I've touched things in this apartment a hundred times. But not tonight. I'm not a numbskull. Seeing all this blood, I knew something was wrong. Horribly wrong. I had to see if she was alive, so I, I, ch I checked her rooms quickly, and I, I think maybe I, you know, stepped in some of that blood. Almost what I had to, but... After I checked, I called the cops and stayed right here until you came. Looks like the key to my apartment. I told you, we exchanged keys a long time ago. You never know when there's going to be an emergency or something. Case in point. No. If I had, I wouldn't be wasting time here talking to some female lab assistant and her lapdog. I told you, I was her fiancé. I had her key, she had my key doesn't mean we don't respect each other's privacy. I knocked before I let myself in, and I only came in because I knocked a long time and got kind of worried. Because if she was going out, I'd know about it. We're that close, you know? And then I saw this nightmare, and I called 911. Rule me out for what? I told you before, I'm your guy where helping find Carrie is concerned. You want to give me a cup to fill, or... That won't be necessary, Mr. Dubois. A swab will do just fine. Over at the Gorman Towers, my apartment. Here's the address. And you people let me know the second you find anything about this horrible mess. I care about Carrie, you know. I really, truly care. Well, I hear you don't have a body for me, not yet anyway, but maybe I can give you some insights based on some photos. I'd be happy to run some tox reports if you give me blood samples as well. Obviously I can't give you a definitive answer, 
but the size is right to have been made by dragging a body across the floor. At least half a gallon, could be more, and since it all came from one person, that person is almost certainly deceased. No problem, check back later. No problem, check back later. Ah, but there's one striking anomaly, however. It's highly unlikely a victim with that kind of wound could remain conscious long enough to spread so much blood around so many places in one apartment. One theory would be the killer held onto the victim and dragged her around the place, which would give us one very bloody perp.